How you doing, everybody? Welcome to Azaba Juban right there. This neighborhood, I guess you would call it the most upscale neighborhood in the city of Tokyo. It's a place where high profile people might be living and who knows who you're gonna find walking around the streets here, but today you're gonna find us doing it. From here, we're gonna go to uh, Rapungi Station. Uh, this is Patio Street and this is Azaba Juban Street. They're both really nice streets. This, this neighborhood has a special charm to it. It's a, a, a kind of a, a feeling that's very much, how do I say it, Azaba Juban? And I hope that you get that feeling too, because we're going to do a street view walk from here at Rapungi over the next 30 minutes or so. Join me as we walk on a beautiful, sunny June afternoon, which is rare because this is the rainy season. Um, I'm going to take you up the other street, but I want to show you this, this road a little bit. And we're going we're gonna to be zigzagging around Azaba Juban um, to give you a feel of this neighborhood. And then eventually we're going to take a left at the big Tsutaya, go through the uh, TV Asahi, uh, garden behind uh, Rapungi Hills and wrap around to Rapungi Station. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, exit 4 is the one that I usually come out at here at Azaba Juban. This one sort of leads you in the right direction, so you want to look for exit 4. That'll help you uh, on this walk. It's connected by the Namboku line on the Tokyo Metro and the Toei Oedo line, which is Toei, so you need different tickets. Um, for each one of those lines. The Oedo line being like the circle line. Uh, this is also a meeting point. You could say, I'll meet you by the weird statue. I don't know what it's called. I'd rather not know, but... <laughs> you could say that. Or you just meet at the Oslo Coffee at exit 4. All right, let's go down the Azaba Juban Street. Uh, right away you can see this is such a quiet neighborhood for central Tokyo. And there's a lot of... Um, um, again, like high profile people uh, living here because it is just really expensive to uh, live here. What is this thing? Some sort of clock. I never noticed that before. There's got to be history to this. I'm going to have to look that up. You also find some very famous um, restaurants, cafes, very pricey places. This is the place where you, a lot of guys will take their dates here to try to impress based on the address of Azabu Juban. A lot of embassies are here, so you have a lot of international people as well. But as you can see, the cafes here are very trendy, very stylish. Um, places are, are changing quite a bit on the street. A lot of them have been renovated. So walking through here, it's a slice of Tokyo that you you might not get a feeling feel of anywhere else if you go to a place like Yanaka It kind of feels the same way, but that's not central Tokyo. This is that's what makes uh, Azaba Juban so special I'm also coming through here during the pandemic and we're gonna see if any of the shops are still are open and some of them might might be closed But you'll see a lot of uh, traditional confection makers as well some really interesting stuff and the prices are, are probably going to be higher here just because the rent is higher here. I guess it's more, I don't know, I guess it would be like the Beverly Hills of Tokyo, maybe in a way. Oh, this lunch looks good. The Nori, Nori Ben. What? That looks really good. Look at that. Is that on rice? Yeah, that's a very modern take on the on the Nodi Ben. It's getting close to lunchtime. All right, better get going. We got a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff to see and do on this live stream. Um, this is also an area of the city where you might want to walk around the alleys just to explore. You'll find lots of interesting shops and cafes in the alleys. Some of them might not have existed six months ago. That's why I, I like to walk through this neighborhood at least twice a year. I don't have too much business here. I used to have friends that lived here. All of them were in the TV business as producers or really well-known actors or actresses. I did have a friend who owned a restaurant here, but it burned down. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because that was actually a good thing for his business. Now he, he smokes um, sausages and bacon and chicken wings and sells them at Costco. So 
<laughs> it kind of worked out for him. All right, we're gonna connect back up to this to this street. I'm gonna take you off road again. You'll see there's some very stylish uh, statues. Stylish, I mean by stylish, I mean kind of weird. Now let's come this way. Sage, you'll mark it there. Oh my gosh, this bakery smells so good. Buttery, buttery goodness inside there. Some shokupan. I had Jotty at bacon. <laughs> I think there used to be a, a restaurant called Frijoles, which had some pretty good burritos. Oh, it's still here. Yeah, again, like I, I was telling you, there's a huge expat community here because uh, diplomats, a lot of embassies are in the area. And you'll find places like this, just... Oh, that's Kanai Likes the Carnitas. I'm gonna get Kanai one, but they have it, this restaurant in uh, Ginza, uh, in uh, Rapungi, where I'm going next. So I can grab Kanai some lunch on the way, back, on the way home. But this frijoles has been here for a while now. Before Taco Bell came to Japan, we had frijoles. Little pricey, but kind of get what you pay for. I have a friend who works at this post office here. I used to work out, we used to work out together at the old, is that him there? In the town there. I have a, there he is, the tall guy. He actually, actually we used to work out in Shinozaki, but he, he works here in Azabu Juban and he can't um, live here because it's just, it's just too expensive. I'll, I'll go in and say hi later. I haven't seen him in a few years since I moved though. All right, I came this way for a reason. I wanna show you like the essence of a Zabajuban is this weird, it feels very much like a small neighborhood because of the nature. Check out this one place where you can buy bentos and kind of eat it here if you just wanna walk around here. But it's very quiet, right? The cars have to go around this park. Gmon three full, thank you, welcome. A lot of cafes. I don't think I ever took Kanai on a date here though. Gonna have to gonna have to remedy that. Some other really trendy or upscale neighborhoods include um uh, Jiogaoka which is uh, on closer to, to Shibuya, kind of between Shibuya and uh, Kawasaki. That's an intersection with a couple of really uh, good train lines, good, good train connections. A lot of famous people I know live there or along uh, in that neighborhood. All right, we're gonna cut back around here, but you can see there's some, uh, some uh, shops over here it's a good mix of residential and restaurants. And that's what makes it a really uh, popular place to live for people who have the cash to do it. There's also a lot of uh, Zaka, Z-A-K-A, which are like um, um, steep hills. This is not a place where it's in the grid pattern. So it's easy to get lost in this area. Yeah, Jiogaoka is uh, less fancy, but it's still got that, that um, I know it's it's got a small neighborhood feel to it, Geogauka. It's it's not as as woody. How do I say? It? There's not as many trees. I don't think. I haven't been there in a long time. Geogauka is famous for its sweets. A lot of cafes there, but it is pricey. And between there on the Oimachi line, between there and Futako Tamagawa, I used to live in Futako Tamagawa. Uh, in a one k, it cost me a thousand dollars. It was a, it was the size of my bathroom now. It was very small. It was like it had a Murphy bed that would you'd push it into the wall and pull it out. Thousand dollars for that place, but it was right next to the station, and I got to see uh, celebrities all the time. Koyuki was uh, a regular. She lived a couple of stations away and was shopping at the Taka, Takashimaya um, there, Rapungi. In fact, my bathroom. Can, can I tell, can I tell you these stories? I feel I I know I'm gonna embarrass myself. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, John Kimura, food and drink fun for Kanai. John, you have just bought Kanai. You've upgraded our burritos.
from regular to grande size, all right, my friend? So Kanai is getting a grande, and she's been eating, eating quite a bit. She's gonna eat my grande. I might have to get her too. Should I, I shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> Be kind. Um, thank you, John. I appreciate it. And, uh, and Wasim uh, Halal is here. What's up? Wasim is in the house. We can feel your presence, my friend. All right, the story, okay. So I lived in a 1K in Futako Tamagawa in 2004. This was a long time ago, okay? This is the first place that I lived when I moved to the city of Tokyo. The first six years in Japan, I lived uh, in, in uh, the countryside of Japan. I lived in, in Nagoya, in Hiroshima, smaller cities than Tokyo. I didn't move to the capital until six years after I, I came to Japan. And uh, my apartment was so small that the, the bathroom, I had to put my feet into the bathtub to use the toilet. All right. I had a keg of beer. I had to put my feet in the bathtub just to, when I sat on the toilet. That's how small it was. So I used to, I used to take, take a newspaper, cross the street to, Matsuzakai, uh, to um, Mitsukoshi, and they had amazing toilets there. And it was, it was cleaner than the one I had in my apartment. So it was really worth it to, to live one minute from a, one of the, the most um, luxurious department stores in Tokyo. Why, why, wouldn't, you use, why wouldn't you use the restaurant? Restroom there, right? <laughs> Why wouldn't you? I, should I share that story? Maybe it's, it's kind of dumb. Oh, by the way, I do have a postcard club. This is the postcard of me and, and my wife Kanai at a, at a hot spring on Nijima. There's a sunset of the Pacific Ocean. This is hot water. That's the cold Pacific. Uh, this is a postcard I'm sending to everybody. Um, so if you do join the postcard club, I will try to send it on a live stream. So you can see the post box that I'm sending it to. So when it arrives at your arrives at your uh, mailbox, you'll know exactly from where it was sent. Look at that pink truck. I'm guessing because this is an upscale neighborhood that, that NTT Docomo, which is the pricier of all the, the plans, is going to have really good coverage. The last thing they want is some celebrity complaining about their 4G LTE, or 5G for that matter. cup of coffee costs probably more than that. I've, I've been to some of these, like Starbucks is Starbucks, right? And the Starbucks, look at the cars are gorgeous here. That's a Lexus. I thought that was some sort of Porsche or something. You'll see some amazing cars going by here. Like this pink truck again. Look at that. I'd like to have that in like a matchbox car thing and send it off to people. Look at that. It's a pretty truck. Well, as you think that everything is really expensive here, and you know, I'm, I am kind of building it up that way, there are 100 yen shops on this street, like can do. So not everything costs a fortune. You can still find things that are reasonably priced. But then I'm, I'm learning that at the 100 yen shop, not everything is 100 yen. So sometimes it's 200 yen. Wow, 50 minute massage for 8,800 yen. It's about 80 bucks. Thailand's cheaper. But a ticket there costs $1,000. Do the math. Wow, a GT. Sweet ride. You can hear the engine. All right, Daie is, a, is a, um, a supermarket chain. They probably have a branch here just so that they say they have a branch here. But it's good for their brand to have uh, branches. So they, I don't know if they, they make their money back. The rent here is probably pretty high. Vegetables are reasonably priced. You have, um, there's some goya, some, uh, what is that? Uh, bitter gourd, carrots for under 100 yen. Or is that zucchini for 88 yen? It's pretty reasonable. Green, uh, red pepper cost uh, 200 yen, 198. I don't know if that's, that's cheap or expensive, but. Oh, look at that bike. It's colorful. Mm. Oh, they got Sprite. I remember looking forever for Sprite. You could never find it. And I found one here. Interesting. 
It's hard to find sprites in, in the vending machines. Oh, okay, there's my friend's, my friend's, uh, um, uh, Craig White is his name. He's from Texas. And he has a business called White Smoke. And uh, he had a restaurant, a yakiniku restaurant. And about 10 years ago, I used to do these things called yakiniku parties, uh, Y-A-K-I-2-9. And uh, it, I, I stopped doing it because I was losing money on it. If people didn't show up, I would have to pay for them. It was not a good idea, but it was the only time I could, I could meet with my friends. I believe this is the location right here. It, it became another cafe, but he had had a fire and uh, I think it had to go out of business. But I remember having, I think a hundred people showed up to my event and we all, and uh, Craig, the, the owner made this amazing yakiniku, uh, these amazing ribs and all sorts of meat. And it was amazing. Like we paid one price and it was all you can eat and drink. He got this deal with Heineken and wow, I, that was the best night ever. And on the other side of it, I believe the, the, this connected to some opening in the back where people could drink on the other side. Gosh, I wish I had the time to do those, those events again. It was the only time where I could meet all my friends together in one spot. I love planning um, um, parties or events. It, going all the way back to my days as a resident advisor at Ohio State, bringing in... Uh... Whoa, what is that? Carl's Jr.'s burgers got a corner? What? All right, I gotta cross this, oh, it's red. Don't wanna break the rules here. It's Carl's Jr. here, what's going on? I thought they only had one in Akihabara. This is not a cheap location too. So what do they got on the menu? 12 bucks for that burger. It's a set though. That's a special, the original Angus burger. The famous star. Which is the one that Paris Hilton was washing the car with. I can't remember. That's the only thing I know about Carl's Jr. Paris Hilton washing a car. I don't think it had anything to do with burgers. It had a lot to do with Paris Hilton. That's a stylish 7-Eleven. All right, again, I'm gonna show you some of the Zakas. I, Zaka, I, it just, it's just like a steep road. You see that right there? Try riding your bike up that. Which I say that as though it's a really hard thing, but everybody's got these these um, batteries on their bike now, so it gives them a little assisted boost. So it's not as wor it's not as bad as it, it used to be. But I don't have one of those um, boost assisted bicycles yet. Look at this 7-Eleven. What's going on here? 7-Eleven's got a balcony for the rich and famous. Hello, I'm Robin Leach. Today we're at the 7-Eleven, looking at the rich and famous, taking a dive. There's probably a pool up there. It's crazy. Oh no, okay, I thought that that was 7-Eleven. That's another restaurant. <laughs> that was 7-Eleven, that would have been crazy. If that was 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven has a, a Zaba Juban has a balcony. What? I would totally not skip all these other restaurants, just get some Tamago Sando and eat it up there. <laughs> oh jeez. All right, we've started the um, um, cool biz. No neckties now. So I'm gonna cross the street here. Hey, look, we found the pink trunk again. This pink trunk is now the um, theme of this episode. He seems to really do a lot of work on in this neighborhood. The pink truck is there. Very cool. All right, let's keep moving. Whoa, it's the Gachapon scooter is that Mr. Sato from Soda News no, it's... oh look at these little it's a, uh, Draimon cards the summer cards are out Japan has some of the best cards because they do some amazing things with paper they fold out and they make a scene like it's summer. Um, they're about $5 each. Or was this the location? I don't remember where my friends, where the uh, white smoke was. Maybe this was it. I don't remember. Yeah, I think that this was it because there's a little garden in the front. Oh, my memories, it's, 
It's 10 years ago though. I'm gonna cross the street here. I think this is the this is where the location was. They all look the same. These cement like stylish cement buildings. I thought according to Japan YouTuber you can't jaywalk. It's a small neighborhood. People are doing it. So this is a pizza place and they have pizza for, for uh, 500 yen. Oh, or was it over there? And here's a, here's a uh, booth with bentos. So that's kind of neat. They're selling all sorts of bentos for, how was it? 800 yen or about $8? It's nice. So you can get the bento and eat it in the park or you can find some friends and share it with them. These are upscale pigeons. Guess think you're better than me. Think you're better than me? Huh? Who are you looking at? No one. Good. Hey, you better hide. I just keep going. Oh, this place is really good. Um, who told me about this? Oh, it was Shinichi from Tabi Eats was telling me about this place. But the, not, not this one, another branch. But it's interesting they have one here. They have all vegetarian food and it is really, really good. That's some good looking bentos too. They're using like a, a different kind of rice, like a more grainy rice. Is that uh, genmai maybe? But they use all vegetables here. And um, the salad bar is supposed to be really good too. Oh, I'll be, I'll be back. I, I like vegetarian restaurants. I'm not a vegetarian, but I, I will eat their food. Just like I think vegetarians should eat my food, which is the omnivore food. Have a steak every now and then. Because I'm cool with vegetarian food. That looks amazing. Look at the colors on that. Nice. Very nice. I'll be back. Oh, they got Uber Eats comes here. Except they make me tip, which is not Japanese. It's very confusing. Once again, um, Uber Eats asks you to tip, and after you rate your driver, which I always give five stars unless, like, they shook my food up or something, um, they ask me to, to up my tip. <laughs> I was like, what? And we've been debating this on, on Only in Japan Go. Should you leave a tip in Japan on Uber Eats for Japan? And I do, but... I probably will stop after the uh, pandemic. I just don't use Uber Eats a lot because I like to go out and I don't want my stuff delivered. I can go out and get it. But Japan doesn't tip and asking for tips is, I, I don't, you, you never give somebody a tip because it's, it's almost insulting. Like they're not making enough for their money, but already we're paying a service charge on top of the fees that they're charging us. But I think here's the deal. Uber Eats is, it's so competitive right now. Uber Eats is, is offering ridiculous um, deals to try to get people to use their service. This is where the problem is. I'm gonna pan back around so you get an idea of what it looks like here. Now they're, they're offering insanely uh, cheap prices and lots of deals or, or cash back if you do this or 2000 yen for if you join or something. What this does is it, it um, eats into the amount, and, and you know who, who gets um, screwed? The delivery people. So they go to us to, so basically what, by tipping, you're, you're, get, you're paying back the money. So I, that's why I don't mind tipping, but you're, you're paying back the money that you're getting on savings from them to start their service. So that's where it has to be coming from. I don't, I don't know, but there's already a service charge in it as well as probably the, uh, and the restaurants will tick up the, the pr price a little bit more too. So don't start tipping in Japan. It's just not a good thing. That's not the culture. To change the culture, meaning people will do things for money, that's not a good thing for Japan. People do it here because they love what they do. They love serving people. And you say thank you, and that means a lot more here. You're not judged by the amount of tip you give. Therefore, the service is consistently extraordinary everywhere except for places with baito, like college kids who are getting paid like really low amount of money. This is a, a upscale supermarket. 
All right, let's take a look at this map that was ripped apart by pigeons, probably. So we have walked from, from exit four, which is here. We walked here um, through uh, Patio Juban in this area. Remember this with all the trees? And we cut across, there's the burrito place was in here. And then we walked, up, we walked down Azab Azaba Juban Street. And now we're here. This is a pivotal place. This tower is where the Tsutaya is, the TV Asahi, and everything changes. This is the end of Azaba Juban, but I, I wanted to introduce this to you because I want, to, I want you to come here and walk around the streets and maybe spend a couple of hours. Or if you're staying in Rapungi, forget Rapungi and just maybe walk around this area. It's so cool and so, so interesting. And there are some temples and shrines that you'll find. Here's the Embassy of Austria. This is the um, uh, Azaba Jub uh, Rapungi High School. Here, these kids probably got it made. So we're gonna walk now. So this live stream is gonna change a little bit. Yeah, this is a real upscale supermarket. So you can get some drinks and stuff. We'll see what we can find on the way. Carlos Infinite writes in, you should give service whether or not you tip, you get a tip or not. I think that's exactly right. Everything is a habit. If you're giving good service, you will always get good tips. You shouldn't do it just for the tips. I, and this is coming from someone who's a waiter. I waited tables through college and I did it because I just liked people. And I found that if I just had fun with my job serving uh, the customers, the tips were pretty good. So I never really cared whether the tips were good or not. But when I did receive a $20 tip or something, I kind of was very appreciative by the, of that, right? But not everybody thinks like that. As we see some more amazing cars go by, there's a Ferrari making a left turn. Whoa. Uh, Team Labs Mini Onsen ex Exhibit. I'm not sure. Let's see. We're going to find out. This... All right. Uh, let me tell you a couple of stories about this place here. Tsutaya is the blockbuster of Japan. Blockbuster, the video rental shop. But Tsutaya was a lot more than that. It was a, a culture convenience center. It was like a place where you would have culture. with A lot of it through books. So it's a bookstore. It's a video rental shop. And it's a place where you would hang out. This Tsutaya is the most prestigious one in the entire country. You know how I know that? Because every time... Um, I, ha I have a lot of friends that are in, in uh, the TV industry. Whenever I met them in this area, we would meet here or inside. I, I don't know why. This is a meeting spot for the celebrities. So if you come in here with your camera and you want to you know, get photos of, of, of stuff, do you want to come here? Top secret, okay? Don't tell anybody. Oh, by the way, the Team Labs is, is I think it's still there. <laughs> it's like right there. How do you spell Tsutaya? Tsutaya. Does that help? I guess it's still here. It doesn't look like there's anybody in there, though. Oh, there used to be a building here. This is where um, Jennifer and I had lunch at a rest French restaurant called Cross. And Jennifer is a food critic, and she was quite not happy with the food. Now I understand why they tore down that building and put in this team labs. Don't think there's anything going on there though. Yeah, I'm out of I'm out of Azaba Juban now, and I'm more in at the I would call this the border. All right, this is the border. This is the uh, great intersection that is Tsutaya Books. Azabajiban is in this direction. And uh, this direction, Nogizaka, it's, I think that's quite a, quite a hike, this direction. We're gonna go towards Hollywood Plaza because this is, because I'm Robin Leach and this is part of the rich and famous. All right, this is, see this road here? This is where the, oh, I believe the Oedo line follows this street in this direction, okay? So the Oedo line will curve around from Azabu Juban and go over to Rapungi Station up this street. There's some really good cafes. If you want to take it slow, go this direction. It'll it'll wrap all the way around. Uh, Tokyo Tower. Ah, we're gonna get some. We'll get a view of Tokyo Tower, but it's in this direction as well. Uh, but we're gonna go this way. 
You know why? Because this is where the rich and famous are, and this is all about the rich and famous. This is, these, these uh, uh, mansions here, by mansion I, I mean like apartments, are super expensive. I know because I was looking at them, just pricing it out, just out of curiosity. Uh, Chicago Africans here, I'm supposed to be studying for work, but my neighbors next door ha are having a loud party, <laughs> John. Uh, so you are drowning out with some music. Sorry about that. I'll speak louder. Also, get kind of extra food. You got it. I am not coming home empty-handed. I'll get three burritos now. So if you do want to want to take a break between the, the walk, but, uh, and I love this walk between Azaba Juban and Rapungi, uh, take a break here halfway and get a coffee or something. It's the way to go. All right, up we go. This street is uh, really pretty during the Christmas season. All these trees have uh, beautiful champagne colored lights. Or is it blue? So I guess it changes every year. Uh, and this walkway is so lit up. It's so pretty. Uh, during the Christmas season, definitely worth the walk from uh, Rup Rup uh, Midtown through Rapungi Hills towards Azabu Juban. Just take it slow. It takes about an hour for that walk. It's really pretty. And in about a week or so, this will be so loud with cicada chirping. But we don't have that. Gosh, the cars here are awesome. On the right, I believe this is TV Asahi, and I'm gonna cross the street illegally somewhere. Actually, I can do it legally over there. On the left are a lot of um, big brand name shops. This is the, I guess the Armani head shop. And uh, some more luxury shops on the left side. Attached to the, to the uh, mansion, the apartment building, the condo. Um, so I believe, hey, Archung89, there's a really good pizza place called Savoy tomato and cheese in Azabuji, but I, did I walk past it? Their Mahagoro pizza is so good. We were there twice a, uh, we were there twice in a week for it. Thanks for the recommendation. I will go check that out. Kanai and I have not been there uh, together ever, which is a shame. So we, gotta, we gotta fix that. So these apartment complex, I, they have something called Belgian Beer Weekend in the summer, every September. But they haven't, they didn't do it last year because of the pandemic. I don't think they're going to be doing it this year because of the pandemic, which is a shame. Is I, I just love festivals. It's a little bit expensive. $30 buy-in. You get tickets for about four or five beers. And you get the, a glass that you can keep. But they haven't been doing it lately. But there's the J-Wave studio. And this is where everybody, I guess you, a lot of you know... A lot of you know that I do Tokyo Eye on NHK uh, World since 2008. Uh, they, they call me a long-time reporter. I guess you're, there's not many of us left <laughs> that were from the, 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 the beginning, the first 100 episodes or so. But Chris Peppel has been there since the beginning. Uh, Chris lived in this neighborhood. I think in this building here. Across the street was the J-Wave studio where he would do the countdown right here. I don't know if it's still done in this studio, but I remember coming here for the Belgian beer weekend. I'm gonna cross the street here, everyone. Just, it was filled with people. And uh, uh, I walked into this shop here. There's like a little VIP area because um, I knew the organizer of the Belgian beer weekend. So I, I went inside of here and here, there was Chris in there buying beer. I said, dude, what are you doing here? He goes, I live across the street. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so, so, uh. and we, I guess he does this show in, just across the street. I could do it in his pajamas if he wanted to. But um, we met, I, I didn't do the show for a couple of years back then. And when I, I caught up with him again, he said he had moved. Back when the 2011 tsunami and earthquake happened, there was a, there's, there's nobody around here. There was like this mass migration of expats that were living here in Japan, especially Europeans, that got free flights to go back to, back to France or Belgium or wherever they were going. Um, a lot of them were diplomats, a lot of them were um, affluent and were, were in residence around some of these buildings. And this became kind of a ghost town, um, 2010, uh, 2011, 2012, 2013. The price of rent in some places were, was cut in half, which made it kind of affordable. And that's when 
that's when he moved into here. I think even for him, it's pretty pricey. Um, and I was actually considering to move here just because it was like the places here were cut in half. The thing was after two years, which is a typical contract for an apartment in Tokyo, they raised the prices again because those expats came back and were looking for their old apartments back, but they were all, all given away. Um, so Chris had to move out. <laughs> he told me he moved out from there. Uh, that sucks. Uh, but that was, it's kind of funny. After, after the, um, they called them fly jeans, these uh, guy jeans, these uh, foreigners that left because of fears of radiation and, and uh, the constant earthquakes. And I can understand why. Because living in an earthquake, it was an earthquake every five minutes, it felt like, is not fun at all. Fly gene. It, that's an actual word that was used in 2011. Um, YouTube was, I don't know, I, I wasn't doing YouTube then, but I don't know if there were any YouTubers talking about it, but fly jeans, the ones that stayed, the people that stayed are some of my best friends here because we are the ones that went, went up and volunteered and did stuff uh, to try to help Tohoku. And um, I was here working with NHK as well, doing, I was picking up a lot of shows because a lot of the foreign reporters had left. So it was a good time for work too. But those who those that left, we called them fly gene, and the, those that stayed became were really stayed at an important time when I think Japan needed them the most. So, but I don't. Is it me or does 720p look like 360p? Where I might be in a dead zone. I do apologize. This is a live stream. Let's see if we can get this to get the signal better. I'm now in the shadow of of uh, Rapungi Hills. It's a shame there's no 5G here yet. Here's the TV Asahi, and I, I don't know how the signal is right now. Just let me know when it gets bad and gets worse. You guys can police it. I can, I, it looks good to me. I'm looking at it at, at real vision. But on the side of the TV Asahi building is a really nice garden with free, pick, free tables that you can just hang out and sun yourself in. Some two dudes doing it. Non-related. Looks like 240p. <laughs> no, it's, this is, we have just entered the Minecraft zone. I apologize, my apologies. It's a bit better. I'm getting away from the building a little bit. I'm gonna run through there again. I apologize, it's just sort of a dead zone. A lot of people come here with dates and you can take a picture. Suzette's here for your fourth burrito. I think I can afford it now. <laughs> She's gonna get the carnitas for sure. Look at, you can get a really nice romantic picture here of this lagoon, um, which looks better at night. A little bit of wind is picked up here, but it's pretty nice to see, um, run, nice to see the, from, from the inside of the TV studio. Uh, Jennifer's done some work here. I've never worked with TV Asahi um, at the studio. I've done a couple of shows, but they're all on location. I'm like the location master. I don't, I'll do studio work, but I'm, I'm the guy they put on location because I like to have fun when I'm out there. All right, let's get, let's, let's get through here really quickly because I, I know the signal stinks. I'll try to put chapter, a chapter playlist in here so you can uh, cut through the, the lousy parts. Hey, Draymond. But this is where the, the um, Belgian beer weekend is every September. Now, now the, um, the Belgians that, that organize it do it in, all over the country. And it was a, a, a 12, it was, it was done every month, I think, even in the winter. They had an event somewhere like Fukuoka or even in Sapporo. People like to drink. And it was good to promote Belgian beer. All right, let's go up the stairs. Hey, Archong is here for Kanai's, your pizza at Savory Tomato and Cheese. You got it. All right. It's a date. I will take, uh, as soon as, as soon as Kanai and I can get out and, and go, we will, we will do that. And I'll report back on how it was, but you might want to remind me. <laughs> I will put that, we'll, we will put that towards a pizza there. If you say it's that good, I believe you. We're going to have to check that out. I'm a pizza fanatic. Hey, Draymond's on the TV there. Now, 
during the Belgian beer weekend, this is all filled with people. You can't even see the floor, all right? And they have live events. And after the event, everyone leaves their glasses behind. These really nice uh, beer glasses. So I would pocket like six or seven of them. So I have like two, do two dozen. Two dozen of them. Oh, good God. Oh my God. All right, we're getting reports that it's blurry. Let's get to the other side. Sorry, let, let me get... To That crow is the reason why the signal is bad. Thank goodness there's an escalator. I think I'm just out of shape from, you know, stay at home. The state of emergency is ending for Tokyo on Sunday in two days. Is that a good thing? I hope so. All right, the signal should get a little bit better from here. Hey, Tigra hops in the house. We've got to start feeding John better food. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, maybe the burrito. I'm still getting the burrito tag. All right, now we're, we're in the center of Rapungi uh, Hills. I'm not sure if the signal's any better. I hope so, because Minecraft is not fun. I'm, I'm working on this too. I'm looking at backpacks and other things uh, to try to beef up the signal. So we've, we've come through here. We took a left at this, sorry for the flashing here. Uh, I'm only going to be here for a couple of, a couple more seconds. We, did, we, we crossed from this road here around the Tutaya, walked up Luxury Hollywood Avenue, cut across to this uh, Mon Garden, which is really pretty on the side of TV Asahi, and now we're walking through Rapungi Hills, which is iconic, an iconic uh, uh, building, Mori Tower. Let's look up here. This is what it looks like in Minecraft. Still potato vision. All right, let's let's hustle through here I'll tell you one thing PVG if he were here he, his neck would be turning left and right quality is good again all right I can take it easy thanks refresh your screen if you're having potato vision or Minecraft this is now where we're coming in Rapungi, and this is where the spider is you all know the Rapungi spider. If you don't, it's a famous place where people will get that angled photo from the spider's abdomen, which is creepy enough, looking up to the top of Morty Tower. It gives the building character, a personality. Oh, check it out! Is it clear enough to see that? Maybe the signal's coming from Tokyo Tower. Once destroyed by Godzilla, it was rebuilt by Toho Cinemas after. To Tokyo Tower with that, um, I, I, they, they told me in an NHK report it was called, it was an international orange, but now I guess the temp, the color changed because when I called it that again, they got angry. The administrators were very, um, they want to make sure that they get their information right. Oh my good. Gosh, what? Stop. Shoe creams. Look at that cream. I gotta get one. Can I get one? No, I can't get one. Diet. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I can't get it. I can't. Cholesterol. My gosh, they're like $10. That's a shoe soft cream. What? Oh, I gotta get it. I gotta get it, but I can't get it. Really? Should I get it? Should I get it? This is not good for my cholesterol. I'm supposed to be watching my cholesterol. Okay, stay strong for the temptation. So I gave all my small, small coins to that homeless guy the other day. Raymond Centeno, you can get one. <laughs> Thanks, Raymond. And I'll bring, the, I'll bring my uh, hospital bill to you too. <laughs> カスタードシュークリームだね。ジャージークリーム。一番人気はカスタードだね。そうですね。あ、じゃあカステルドは一つお願いします。ありがとうございます。
あはいそれそれあ袋いらないですよすぐに食べますはいお願いしますはいあーないで大丈夫ですはいアルコホはい、はい、ありがとうございます。Oh, ありがとうございます。はい。Oh my word. What have I done? What have you made me do? Oh my gosh. Look, there's vanilla beans in this. Oh, I shouldn't be eating this before I eat the lunch. This is illegal. And this is heavy. This has some weight to it. There's some. There's some. It's voluptuous. I'm gonna come to the side here. Tell me if the signal's bad because you have to see this. This is not good in Minecraft. All right, I need you to see this in full glorious, at least 320, 320p, okay? <laughs> Just tell me if the signal's bad. Is it good? All right, cool. I'm gonna put it down here. I'm gonna have to. All right, I want you to enjoy this view of Tokyo. This is one of the most beautiful,、um, like, panoramic views at night of the city. I think Odaiba might be a little bit better, but I can't complain about this one. All right, got the tripod. You're roughly at 720p. All right, that's good news. It looks good in 8 bit, right, in Bela? <laughs> Really? Ah, I definitely need coffee, but I don't know. Things take too much time. I do have to get Kanai her lunch and get back. All right, I wanted to show this to you, share this with you. Is it an 8 bit 420p now? Oh, come on. No, come on. We got to get decent quality here. This thing is crunchy. This is some sort of amazing pastry here.、Um, Scotty H, you only live once. That's funny because I just watched you only live twice the other day. Chris r a n c y Australia. Thank you. Tom Higgins for your upcoming gastric bypass. <laughs> oh no. And I'm sure I missed a couple of, couple of people. I don't, I'm, I, I can't pan back for some reason. There's a bug that doesn't allow me to see, to see everybody who helped me raise my cholesterol today. All right, let's give this a try because I gotta move on and get that burrito. Oh, this way. Stop looking at the stairs. Oh my. Almond. Toasted almond. That's what's on top. Toasted almond. I've had, like, I've had the、um, uh, custard pies in the United States. What, is, what do you call them?、Um, you know, those、um, uh, frosted cakes and stuff. I forget what they're called. They came in the packages. They had apple pie, French apple. They had, like, a,、um, well, they had a custard one, and, it, and that was really good. But this custard tastes real. I can taste, like, the eggs in it a little bit. I can taste the vanilla beans. There's a, it tastes non chemical. Although, custard. Chemical custard is good too. This tastes almost healthy.
just be careful. Every bite, it oozes just a little bit more. Eggy custardy. Watching a middle-aged man eat desserts, not, not, not great. You know what's better? Hearing me eat it and grossing you out on the other side while looking at a beautiful view. Isn't that better? Sounds like heaven. <laughs> really? Dude, your heaven is sick. Yeah, there you go. I think I, I think I, I burned this off. Didn't I burn it off? A hot mess. That was pretty bad. I had an audience behind me. People were watching me over here. I had an audience here. I'm like, what is that guy doing? All right, never mind. All right, I got to get back here. Let's let's finish off our walk. I got to take you to... Just also, don't climb this. There's, there are signs. There's a place where you can eat in the back. If you want a table or a, a place to sit. You got a baby carriage or something. It's good to, good to know. I have to get my mask on here. I'm gonna do it with my mask. I oh, hear it is. This is my walking around mask. I've got a different mask for public transportation. Here we go. Bye bye, Tokyo Tower. Hello, Rapungi. All right, let me know if this if this signal's bad. I'm gonna take you to the spider now. Oh, that was. I feel so energized now. That that was really good, eggy custard. Thank you, Tom Higgins and Cheryl MP. We're gonna go get Kanai some of those burritos and I will take you past there on the way to Rupungi Station. All right, here's the spider, which is creepy enough. At night, this thing looks like it come alive and eat you. Put you in that little sack. Ugh. If anyone knows the history of it, you can write it in the chat here. Um, this is a pretty iconic angle. Are you looking at the sack up at um, Rapungi uh, Midtown? That's a nope spider. <laughs> Just run away. You see the spider coming at you, you run away. It's gross. Um, I used to go to, uh, to um, uh, YouTube events in here, but YouTube, I believe, has moved their offices to uh, Shibuya Stream, which is a, a more uh, new building that's more high tech. I'm sure they've got like terabytes. Uh, fast uh, signals inside there. I've been to the new new place once. It's so so nice. Um, for those who like flowers, you have Flower Man over there, which is gigantic. That's worth a shout out. Nice. All right, if you do like these neighborhood walks, we're a little bit short on the likes. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know that this is all good to you. You're in. You're in on it. See if we can get to like six, seven hundred likes. <coughs> We're kind of short on that. I, you know, I, I found if you don't ask, nobody, people forget to, you know, encourage me. And this is the, the Hollywood Beauty Plaza is where I take the escalator down. It's kind of a, a quicker way than the other steps in the front. So welcome to Rapungi, everybody. That was uh, sort of the buffer area. This is more the, the street that a lot of you know quite well, maybe if you've been here. There's a highway that runs through it. I've, I've, I've driven on that a couple of times. It's kind of scary up there. Yeah, I did, I, I'm gonna get out to the main street. The signal should get stronger in about a second or two.
All right, we're outside. Um, this back alley is famous because that right there is a Cinnabon, or it used to be. So I'm going to take a really quick look before I wrap around. Kanai's Burrito is also right over here, where they, they that free holy shop we saw in Azabujuban also has a shop there where I'm going to be getting uh, two or three to go. And Kanai has ordered a, a carnita. So the wind is also picked up here. I apologize. I'm going to see if I can sneak up against the side of this building to decrease the wind here. Cinnabon is amazingly bad for you. And there's a shop right here. Yeah, it's still there. Dudes. No, I'm not getting one because I had that shoe cream up there. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, they're making them now. I'm losing my voice. Whoa. Look at that. I can smell the cinnamon. They, oh, that's why, because they have cinnamon smell come pumping out of there. Oh, this is, how, do, how do you say no to this? Oh, they put bacon in the cinnamon roll. Why would they do that? Oh my gosh, why would they do that? It's genius. So that's genius and dangerous at the same time. All right, the burrito place is right here. And uh, I gotta come back and get that. Oh, it's, it's in that building right there. So I'm gonna wrap around. They have the, it's the same menu as the other place that I showed you too, but right now I'm gonna snake across. This used to be, um, okay, this is a, 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 a Shake Shack now. There used to be an ice cream place here that, um, what was it called? They use like a frozen grill. I forget what that ice cream place, but that's out of business. The Shake Shack has taken over. The AstroTurf is still here. This used to be a Tully's coffee, but now it's now, it's now something else. Jack's wife, Freda, is a New York City bistro. This is a, now Jack's wife, Fredo, has a shop here. And a Lululemon, which is, a, I guess, that's some sort of yoga place. The media across the street has been here for a very long time. He gets this is where we get foreign stuff and like pumpkin pie. If I wanted to make a pumpkin pie for, for uh, Thanksgiving or something, you can get that here. But Rapungi hasn't changed too much. Hasn't changed too much. How's the signal now? Is it a little bit better? This has changed. This was not here. And a lot of you who haven't been to Japan in a long time are gonna be surprised. A Shake Shack has taken over the city. It used to be a New York thing. Now it's like a global thing. Welcome everybody to Rapungi. This is very close to Rapungi Station. I'm gonna take you to the, the corner the where uh, Almond is. That's a very famous place. Uh, uh, here's the start of Rapungi Station. So we've completed the walk from Azaba Juban to Rapungi. Hopefully the signal is a little bit better than it was when we were trapped between the buildings back there. I have heard that they are putting in 5G inside the, not just the phone booths, which offer free Wi-Fi, but they're putting 5G inside of the traffic lights. So all the traffic lights have it, have the millimeter waves. The reason why is because during the Olympics, um, we're supposed to be able to see some, some non, some uh, non uh, some driverless cars driving because they're being controlled by the millimeter that's a cool looking uh, Volkswagen that's a damn cool Volkswagen what look at the ra racing stripes on that thing that is the FedEx colors Beautiful. B E A beautiful. Is it me or is it like car companies ha are, have been making bicycles here? I saw that Chevy had bicycles. It's like, what? Really? Is that an only in Japan thing? Shake Shack 
way better than in and out Burger. Oh, don't. Oh, no. The debate has started. Really? Do you think so? East Coast versus West Coast. Shake Shack is... I don't know if In-N-Out Burger is, 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 is quick, but Shake Shack can take some time sometimes. But their half and half uh, uh, tea and lemonade is really good. So for a lot of you that have, haven't been to Japan in a long time, seeing this might be a little nostalgia, nostalgic, especially if you like to go out clubbing. I don't go to Rapungi anymore since I grew out of it. <laughs> like going out to to these bars, Gas Panic, and uh, what, what were some of the other, Wall Street. I, I, back in 1998, there's a place called Lexington Queen that we, we would go to on the corner here. There used to be a Johnny, Johnny Rockets up here, this uh, cheesy um, 1950s diner thing where people would sing. They used to have it up there in 1998, but it's been gone for, for decades. This direction will take you to Rapungi uh, Midtown, which has beautiful lights at Christmas time and is has a different vibe. Almond, Almond is here now. It moved to this area and it looks a little bit different than before. So take note of that because it's a big meeting place, but it used to be here back in the day. This is the big intersection. The Outback Steakhouse is still here. Right in front of you, right in the middle there. And you should be able to get a view, an eyeful of Tokyo Tower. Welcome to Rapungi, completely different neighborhood, wouldn't you say? It is a completely different neighborhood and it feels it feels bigger in Rapungi. It could have to do with the fact that there is a highway above that, that's generating a lot of noise. But in general, this is a, a much a bigger, louder, taller neighborhood than Azabu Juban. But you can go from a quiet, tranquil, upscale neighborhood to a place like this. That's pretty cool. Tony P, curious John, how popular are electric bikes in Japan? <coughs> um, do you mean like in China, they have these bikes that you don't have to pedal at all? Not too popular, but the bikes with, like that bike that, that does not have any battery on it, but battery assisted bikes are everywhere, but electric only bikes, I've not seen them at all. Uh, that's why I've seen them everywhere in China though. All right, guys, I got I to gotta go back and, and uh, get back to Kanai and take her her burrito. Thanks so much for watching. This was a lot of fun. I hope that you enjoyed. Um, aren't they illegal in Japan? They could be. That could be the reason why I don't see them. As someone who has a license, I drive cars, so I don't need to ride electric bicycles. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna, I got a lot of stuff planned for the weekend. I just hope that the weather is okay for me to do that. Uh, Peter and I are still planning to go to Heiwa Jima and pay our respects to a POW camp that used to be there, show you some old pictures and talk a little bit about the history. Um, there's a lot of history everywhere you walk around the city of Tokyo. In fact, this street that we see here, this used to be where a lot of GIs would come, a lot of hamburger places, uh, a lot of um, um, like American restaurants are along here. That's why these clubs are still here, going all the way back to the days of the, where the GI would come here and, and party but it's changed quite a bit since then. And uh, I also have a, a, a night stream of Shinjuku I'm planning to do with, with uh, uh, Tokyo Sam, TKYO Sam, who uh, uh, knows the neighborhood pretty well. I'm, we've been talking about it for a little while and, and hoping to connect up with him. I gave him a day's notice, we'll see what happens. Depends on the weather, depends on the weather. But we're having a pretty good month on Only in Japan Go. If you haven't already, click that thumbs up button, do subscribe. I appreciate the support everybody. Thanks for buying me, Kanai and I lunch. I'm gonna go get those burritos before I get in, get into the uh, um, Oedo line. Back this way, there's Midtown. Have a good day wherever you are in the world. Good night. See ya in the next live stream tomorrow.